great angle. So, I'm kind of in the middle of reading Clytemnestra. Clytemnestra. Yeah. Um, and I'm very, like, into that book. However, I forgot that book in my mum's. So, yeah. I could go down and get it, but it's raining. And I'm like, do I really want to go out in the rain and get soaked and get my book wet? I do not. So, I figured I would start my reread of House of Earth and Blood. So I can start, this book is making my face go even redder, uh, so I can start House of Sky and Breath. Because I have just finished A Court of Silver Flames. They're so long, these names. Sarah J. Mass. Oh my god, this is making my face go really red. No. Um, anyway. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to start this reread. It's going to be, I mean, it's going to take me probably a couple of weeks because I'm not, I'm not feeling it. Also, I just want to take slow. So this is going to be a very choppy vlog. All right. Bye. Hello, my dudes. Um, so I just wanted to jump in because updates are good. I don't know. But I am having the best time rereading this book so i'm only about 216 pages in and you can tell i've not made a big dent in the book um i'm about to start chapter 20 it seems so i've just gotten to the point where bryce is starting the investigation so she's just about started the investigation so i mean not a lot has happened just yet well People died, or wolves died, I guess, and a demon has been loose twice. Um, um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, not a lot's happened, so see you later. See if we can do this. Not sure about the balancing thing because I have my like, what's it called, the little gorilla grip, it's um, kind of gripping my knee. So, you may be wobbly, but also, I need to sit very still. Anyway, so, I've, I've just woken up, it's like, like 6.55am, apparently. So I have this thing now where apparently I wake up around like 6am, and I'm like, let's just start a day! Why? I'm not a morning person. Buddy, let me sleep. It's fine. Um, I hate it and I love it. Anyway, so the reason I picked up the camera while looking like morning um, is because I think it's just the last chapter. I'm on chapter 97, page 794. I think it's just yeah it's just the oh it's there's an epilogue after my bad um basically it's just like four uh, for chapter four pages left so yeah um I want to complain first so apparently I've read like this whole book without scratch scratchy cracking the spine which I, I'm I'm not complaining about but uh I find it funny what I am going to complain about is whoever printed this book because I don't think you did a very good job. So this little um sh sh like sheets protective thing, can you see? So the plastic that's like over the top of like the whole book. Um, so where I've been holding the book, it's like right here. It's like, excuse me, and also on the back where I've been like, because I kind of hold the book like this, so 
it's exactly where I've been holding the book that it's like flaked up. It did this with another book I've read recently and I can't remember which but it's I think it's another one of these chunky ones. Oh my goodness I can't speak. Anyway so I've not been doing a lot of updates uh, while I've been rereading this book mostly because I've just like gotten stuck in it and just been loving life. I can't tell you why I love this book. I just do. It's like, um, it's like it's merged Sarah J Maas's like previous books, uh, well series. So it's the uh, the Throne in Glass one and the Akatar ones. Those kinds of worlds merged with our world. It's not really our world, but it's it's the most it's the closest things we got to our world. You can tell I've just woken up because I have no words. With that, there's a bit of like murder mystery plot going on. It's honestly, it's such a good time. And um, so you get to know Bryce throughout the book. And first, she's seen like this party princess who just does a lot of drugs and drinks a lot. Uh, and then when her best friend Danica dies. Is like she's quit cold turkey, but she's still making, well, not making, but she's still letting people believe she's like this party princess. So there's this scene when um, she's just drinking water, but is it Hunt that comes up and like sniffs her drink? And he's like, this is water. He thought it was vodka. Um, and she's like, yeah, I don't drink. <laughs> um, funny. Um... What else? So like towards the end of the book when um, like the bad guy as it were sort of reveals himself. I should say themselves shouldn't I because just saying it's a he I'm spoiling it. Shoot. Actually I don't care because I think this is going to be a very spoilery vlog going forth so who gives a shit. Anyway, so when the bad guy reveals himself, like, I'm the one behind everything, uh, and kind of, like, corners Bryce, and starts the whole, like, opening all the gates, bringing in all hell. Literally, he opens the gates to hell, and the demons come out and starts killing people and stuff. Hell with one L, by the way. I don't know the reason for that. Maybe we'll find out. I don't really care, though. It's fun. Um, so basically, once... <laughs> so she kills him. Spoiler. She kills him and, like, inviscerates him. And then she hoovers up, like, his ashes. I found that scene so funny the first time around. This time around as well, it's like, I just killed this dude, I'm literally getting rid of the evidence now. <laughs> uh, uh, I fucking love her. <laughs> she's amazing. Um, and then after that, she's like, getting like, battle gear ready. Like, her version of battle gear, it's not like she's strapping on. But, yeah, she brings all the weapons and she starts running through... Uh, her city, like, get in the shelters, like, like, making sure people get in the shelters. She's like, awesome. Uh, and then she starts killing demons along the way or whatnot. And she's like, she's so badass. I love it. She, so, throughout the book, we sort of get this, like, picture of her. So she has... I mean, he's her stepdad, but he's her father. Um, not biological father. He's her father. Um, what's he called? Randall. So he's been this, like, I guess military dude. Uh, so he's trained her to, like, protect herself and stuff. Uh, so she has this, like, innate, I'm a badass, but I've trained for it before. 
but she's not like keeping it up like um her friend Fury, who's a mercenary, but it's like hushed up. She goes around killing people for money or something. I don't know. Um, but anyway, so Bryce's like badassery kicks in and she, she saves the day. I'm like, I love her. I honestly love her. I love this book. And it's like, I can't really explain why I love this book. I just do. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> My point of this update is that I'm going to read uh, the last bit of it. I'm not sure I'm going to start the next one quite yet. Because I feel like I should wake up before that. Uh, this was a reread. House of Sky and Breath. I have to think about that. House of Sky and Breath, Breath is a first read. So I feel... Like I should be more awake because I'm so freaking excited to read that book. I know the hype's died down a bit for it because when it came out last year, everybody was like reading it first thing, and I was like, uh, yeah. Um, so I'm I'm excited to see because I know there was a lot of people that said they hated that book, but then other people said that. They probably hated that book because they hadn't read all the other Sarah J Maas books before. Because um, apparently in that book, we merge all the worlds. I don't know. But I'm curious to see. Yeah, so I kind of didn't want to read House in Sky and Breath before I'd read A Court of Silver Flames, which I did recently finish so we're good we're good hello munchkin you go crazy okay cool cats um yeah i do want to take my time with it so this yeah so this might be like a very long vlog not long as in time wise well maybe that too but also I might not finish that book until like December, but I'm okay with it. I want to devour it and savor it and all that yummy stuff. The boys are going crazy now, so that's great. Um, also, I've promised Lucy that I'm going to update her along the way. I'm basically going to spam her on updates because she recently finished that book and um, yeah. I'm excited. <laughs> also, Lucy, I'm sorry for all the spam. But I did warn you. <laughs> that light is making it look like it's daylight outside. It is not. It is not. Where's the... See? Black. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> not while we're here. So, this book. This book is taking me for a wild ride and I'm not sure I'm here for it. Well, so I read... I read like five pages and I'm like... I don't want to read anymore because I'm very tired of Sophie. That's the name, right? Sophie? Or is it Sophia? I'm going to go with Sophie. Anyway, um, so it's the... I think it's a prologue. Is it a prologue? It's a prologue. So um, about halfway through <laughs> that prologue... Yeah, I did read five pages and then I put it down because I like... Fuck up, Sophie. I don't... I don't want to read about you right now. I want what I left off in book one. <laughs> anyway, um, but about halfway through in the prologue, we change uh, POV. So we're going with, I want to say Pippa. Someone else. Um, I'm as uninterested in this character as I am in the Sophie character. 
I don't know, maybe I will grow to like them later, who knows, but I mean it's a like pull no punches kind of a start to a book, so hooray for that, but also I didn't want to read about them right now, I wanted Bryson Hunt, because you know, that's where we left off in book one. Anyway, um, I did... I did eventually pick up and start reading anymore. Anymore? More. Um, so basically I've made it to chapter 9. I had to stop myself from reading, okay? I had to stop myself. I had to pull myself apart. That doesn't sound right either. Anyway. <laughs> this book is making me delusional. <laughs> like I wasn't delusional to begin with. Anyway, um, chapter one and onwards, at least uh, chapter one through eight, because that's what I've read, then we get the Hunt Bryce thingamajing. So it's starting off slow, as book one did, so we're kind of like easing into it, I'm guessing, or Sarah J Mass is just dragging it out. I don't know. I am invested. I'm invested. Yeah. Basically, what have you learned so far? I forget. Wow, memories. <laughs> I'm a bit overworked, okay? Don't judge me. Um... <laughs> so basically, we're starting up slow. What have we learned? Um, more or less, the Autumn King, Bryce's bio daddy. Um, he's basically selling her off in marriage to Rune's cousin, something like that. Um, he's a dick. As far as I know, maybe he gets better. I don't know. So far, he's a dick. Uh, and I, I don't want him there. I also don't know where this book is going because I haven't read the blurb. I'm going to go with the... I'm not going to read the blurb. Feels, feels wrong. No, don't read. Don't read the blurb. I want to, but I'm not. I just want to read the book. I just want to read the book and see what happens. Because I'm curious, because I, what I know is that this book is going to connect to Sarah J Mass's other worlds. I don't know, no, but this is what people have said. Basically, they said you won't like this book unless you've read all the other books. So there you go. Um, yeah, I, I want to read more. I want more. This lighting is going up and down, isn't it? Anyway, uh, now I've done this update, which is a terrible update, um, but at least I can continue reading and maybe remember to update before I read nine chapters. Well, eight chapters in a prologue. 98 pages. I'm a terrible blogger, okay? Oh, who cares? Why is it very light now? It's so bright! I've clearly had too much coffee today. Oh dear. Also, why do I want to drink more coffee and like stay up all night? Toxic behaviour. Don't do it. Don't do it. I mean, it's Friday, so I don't... Don't. Don't do it. Don't. No, no, no. No. Right, so this new governor, Celestina, she is either deluded or she's up to something. I just met her, I don't know. Agent Silverbow? What the fuck? What the actual fuck? Also, um, Clay, don't worry about it. What the actual fuck? Okay, that's all.
Hi! So guess what? Um, I've completely forgotten to put, to put, to pick up the camera and update on this book. So, I've read a bit since last update. Some things have happened. So, right, let's see if I can remember what I wanted to say. So, where did we leave off last? I think it was... Um, Cormac being outed as Agent Silverbow. <laughs> I found it, found it, I find it hilarious that there's like secret agents in this now. So basically, um, Rune got sort of like uh, pulled in to be <laughs> Agent Knight. Yeah, so he, he kind of gets, so Sophie, um, have I mentioned Sophie? I don't know, but Sophie, um, who they're kind of looking for, her and her little brother, Emil, and um, yeah, so Sophie used to be like the communication person with like their secret intel, I don't know what to call them, um, Anyway, she used to get like secret intel, but there's only like one way to communicate now. Um, well, there's not really any way to communicate anymore. But so they used to have these like walk talkies kind of things with uh, a special stone in them. Now, the, the, all of them have been destroyed except for one. So there's only one stone left. And Rune having this ability to like mind speak, they figure he'd be able to like harness the ability of this stone. Well, his ability and harness it with the stone and communicate with the other person on the other end, which is called Agent Day. So, Agent Night and Day. <laughs> it kind of works. So, the way it kind of works is he kind of goes into a trance and they kind of meet in like a dream landscape sort of thing. So, it's kind of fun. Although, they cannot see each other. So, he's apparently covered in shadows while she's covered in flames. So, Agent Day and Agent Night. Now, um... I'll get to it later, I think, but I'm kind of trying to figure out who Agent Day is, and I have theories. I'm thinking, well, let's just go, I'm thinking it may be the Hind. I'm just getting those vibes from what's happening, like, from what I've read so far. So I'm on, I'm going to start page chapter 56 um so i don't have a lot of information but it's it's the way that there's a scene where hunt meets the hind i don't remember her actual name lydia lydia uh anyway the hind um where he meets her and he's like, I can see fire in her eyes. And she's like covered in fire. Also, there's a, another scene where the whole gang sort of gets caught. They're doing some things they maybe shouldn't be doing. And they kind of get caught by the hind. And she's like, well, naughty, naughty people. <laughs> I caught you now. And they get away from her. But um, she being like also in the cop thing, it's not, they're not policemen, but they're the land's police people. Anyway, her being connected to that, they're thinking like, oh, she's going to bust us for real, but she's not said a word to anyone that she saw them doing the funny business. So I'm thinking, these are my theories and those are the kind of clues I have so far. I need to take a break. Where was I? I don't know. Um, yeah, that's my theory. I'm sticking to it. 
those are my clues I don't know um what else what else what else yeah so there was this whole thing so they're looking for this Emil kid and it's this whole big thing going like back and forth and stuff and I'm like cool and then it kind of resolves itself <clears throat> and then it kind of resolves itself and it turns out Bryce found the kid and he's been staying at the Viper Queen and she just goes there and picks him up and like gets Fury to come and escort him to her parents and he's getting like a new home and new name and all that but but there was this bit so it's it is explained later but when we get there I'm like this is not possible she cannot have found him before all of this at least the timeline doesn't make any sense but then again the timeline that we're reading could like it could be longer it could be shorter it's there's no real like reference of how long time has passed so i suppose but also i think there's like a tiny light like, tiny little plot hole there um and i'm not quite satisfied with the answer it the answer makes sense sure but also it's a bit too convenient. I do like that um, her mum and stepdad like adopts this kid and they're like, we have a new child in our life. It's also giddy and stuff. Uh, it's adorable. Um, but yeah. Oh, 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 so. <laughs> I get so the whole Sarah J Mass thing it, it, like all her books all her series it's like mates 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 everyone's mates and not mates as in friends mates no mates as in bonded for life um <laughs> so like um Hunt and Bryce they they do hook up finally um, because in the beginning of the book, they're like, mm, no, we're not gonna do this yet. We're gonna wait. We're gonna wait. And then Cormac turns up and all hell breaks loose. And then they just hit it off. So, <laughs> and once they start doing it, they doing it like rabbits everywhere, it feels like. And so... What I liked a lot about Bryce, at least in book one, was that she was like this independent bitch and she was like, yeah, I'll have you if I feel like it. Eh, maybe, maybe not. It doesn't matter. I'm still gonna like go on slaying. Um, but yeah. And then in book two, she's like obsessed with him. She needs to have him like every hour of every day. I, I, not literally, but that's what the vibes are. And I'm like, ugh. <sighs> yeah, that's another thing with Sarah J. Master's book. So in the beginning of a series, they're, they're quite tame. And then we get like some smut, some sex, some, some stuff. And then it gets raunchy. And then it gets weird. <laughs> We kind of went from tame to weird. Well, raunchy weird. Somewhere along those lines. It, it, yeah, it's it's a lot. It's a lot. I don't mind it per se. Um, because uh, since I just... Since I've quite recently read A Court of Silver Flames. Where the sex is too much. Um, it's way too often for what the, like the plot needs and um what they do i mean i guess some people find like semen running down someone's legs hot i find it gross <laughs> okay i find it gross i don't understand why that's hot but sure and uh, yeah that that's when it gets weird basically 
<sighs> yeah, so uh, Hunt and Bryce are now mated and they're like smelly mates. Not like smelling weight, but they, they apparently smell a lot to everyone. And I'm like, why are you smelling everything? So, um, what's her name? Queen Hypaxia? Is that her name? The witch, witch queen? Um, who's like engaged to Rune. Um, so she and Bryce, uh, are kind of out on a walk, girly night out, not really a girly night out, but they, they go to a pizza place to have a chat, girly chats, and then they take a walk. And Ethan, um, the wolf who got, not abandoned, abandoned, executed, those are the two words I have in my brain, and neither of them are the correct word. Wow, okay, so he got kicked out of the wolf club, basically. <laughs> I hate myself. <laughs> um, and he's kind of working as um, the, the Hypaxia, if that's her name, um, her, like her bodyguard, so this sort of thing. It, she made a deal with Brune, and he was like, okay, because so, Ethan is like living with Brune and the other dudes. And they kind of like it. I mean, Ethan's cool. But anyway, so they get attacked by two demon thingies. And uh, one of them, like, rips out Ethan's throat. And I'm like, dude, give that dude a break. So in book one, Ethan was kind of like, he was... It was kind of a dick to Bryce. I'm not. I'm not gonna lie. But towards the end of it, he kind of redeemed himself a bit. So when he gets like his airtime in book two, this being book two, um, he gets. We get to know him a bit more, and he's fun. He's a fun character. So him just getting his throat ripped out is like, wow. Okay, so uh, Hypaxia has healed him and he's been taken to like the witch embassy or wherever she's staying and so I don't know if he's gonna be okay but he seems okay for now so we'll see. He's probably gonna live, I'm not gonna lie. Um, that's the feeling I'm getting. Um, there's not, it's not like a Brandon Sanderson book where if someone had their throat ripped out, they would be dead, dead. They wouldn't be like healed and going out to war again. Um, so we'll see. That basically, that's just basically just what happened. So I, I, I don't know what's more happening. What's more happening? Words, words. Oh, oh, so, um, going back, there was this thing that, so they went to this astronomer dude to like find Ethan, not Ethan, Emil, um, but also to talk about um, uh, Connor and the the wolf pack thing, the the ones who died, uh, Connor being Ethan's brother, because um, Ethan kind of wants to know, because they found out that in the bone quarter, so when people die, they go into the bone, bone quarter to like, I don't know, live their best afterlife. But apparently, after a certain amount of time, they go through, like, another gate and they become second line and nobody knows what happens to them. Except that that second light channels, fuels the city more. So, so when you do the drop, you get, you, you kind of exude first light, which powers the city. And the second light from after you're dead... Uh, kind of does the same, but yeah, he kind of wanted to know if Connor was okay, if he was like in at peace or whatever. Uh, so they went to this astronomer dude, uh, and basically Connor went back later and stole these rings. <laughs> so they freed like three tiny little fire sprites, like Lihi Lihi Haba, Lily, that that little fire sprite dude, uh, girly, uh, from Big One. And also, a dragon! A little lady dragon. Well, she's like human size, but apparently she's a dragon. I'm, I'm not sure how this works, but we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. I don't know what's happening. Honestly, from what I've been chatting just at you right now, I'm not even sure what's, what, I've, what I've said. 
I, I, I don't know anymore. Ah, my brain. Yeah, you're, you're not going to be very notified by me right now. Right? Yeah. Anyway, um, I highly doubt that I'm going to remember to pick up the camera again before the end of the book. But if I do, I'll see you then. If not, I'll see you at the end of the book. Bring me some things. Also, now I'll save that for the end and let's see what's happening because, well, okay, I'll say it now because um, people have been saying that you, people doesn't like, people don't like this book because they haven't read uh, A Court of Silver Flames because they sort of merge in this book. Um, they haven't so far, not that I've noticed. So, it's gonna happen in these pages if it happens because so far I'm like eh I mean yes I see similarities between all her books but not in the way that they're like interconnected so except that I feel like the star sword might be the one that um, Nesta made but I don't know that's as far as I've gotten. I don't know. <laughs> I'll see you later. Well, as predicted, I didn't pick up the camera again. Um, so I finished. I finished and I have some things to say. So, I did notes. So, there's a scene where Bryce essentially needs to teleport everyone out. Um, it's high pressure, but she's like, I can't do this. I've never done this before. <laughs> Lies. Because, I mean, it wasn't intentional, but she has teleported with uh, Hunt twice. Sure, it was in the midst of an orgasm, but it still counts. She's still teleported with another person. So, she has done it before. Twice. <laughs> lies, I tell you, lies. Also, I knew the hysteria was so sus. I didn't know they were this sus, but I knew they were sus. More sus than it's stated in the pages before. So basically, the Asteri is using uh, people. The first light that like emits from the, the people uh, when they would make the drop. And then the second light that we found out happens in the bone quarter after death. Um, they use that too. They use it as energy. Basically, the Asteri are using the people as fucking batteries. Th it's the Matrix. It's the Matrix in Feywild. <laughs> it's good though. It's, it's so good. So good. Um, so we eventually make it towards the end and towards the point where Akatar and Crescent City meet up and it's like on the last chapter so I'm like what the fuck what the fuck uh, <laughs> but I was right about the star sword it was the one Nesta made yeah uh-huh yeah, uh, <laughs> basically um, things happen in the end. The last couple of chapters are so intense. I love it. Those those were the best times. They're like jump scenes between the, the different parties doing the different things that's like trying to, I don't know what they're trying to do. I guess they were going in for information and a rescue mission, uh, but... Yeah, it, 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 things go to hell. Literally, Bryce thinks she's gone to hell, the the planet hell, where the 
the other dudes, she thinks she's gone there to get their army to help defeat the Ystera because the Ystera needs to go. <sighs> Bryce finds her, beside the first light, like the Ystera is using people as battery stuff, Bryce finds out that uh, they've basically been going from planet to planet, conquering and, uh, you know, essentially eating the people. Well, eating their energy. It's what feeds them. It's what feeds them. Um, but also, like, the people that's on Midgard, like the Crescent City world, they've come from different places. This is confirmed here. I mean, I had my suspicions before, and they have said, like, hints and bits that it's like, um, well, it was a different world, they came from a different world and such and such, I don't know the exact wording of them all, but from, like, book one, um, there's loads of, like, hints that, um, that Midgard is not there primary world it's not their first world like their ancestors came from somewhere else and yes <laughs> very much so um and like towards the end there's like hints um of like there's this island where <laughs> there's so many fays with so much magic i mean akatar it's that it's obviously that uh and i was like is this it? Is this is this what we're getting? No, 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 no. In the last chapter, not counting the epilogue, in the last chapter. Hello, Bryce Quinlan. My name is Reason. Excellent. So, yes. Now I'm excited for, like... Crescent City Book 3, which comes out next year. Um, I have a feeling the paperback version, which is what I'm going to wait for, will come out the year after. So I'm, I guess I'm waiting two years. Uh, <laughs> but I've also heard that the drafting process of the next Akata book is like... It's in its final stages, I suppose. Um, so eventually we're going to find that. I do wonder about the timeline, though. Because it feels... That, so Midgard's been there for like 15,000 years or something. So I'm wondering, when Bryce goes over to whatever place... Akatar is cool. I don't freaking know. Um, when she goes there, has she gone back in time as well? Or are the characters we're seeing, the, the old friends from the Akatar world, are they 15,000 years old? Plus. I mean, they're Fae, so it's a possibility, I guess. But also... I have so many questions. Well, that was a wild ride. Honestly, a wild ride. I love uh, Sarah J. Mass's writing. Honestly, it hooks you in. It's so easy to read. It hooks you in. I do feel there are like minor plot holes every now and again, but not so much that I like want to tear my hair out. Just, yeah. I mean, she does have so many sex scenes <laughs> and I do question if we need all the sex scenes because they don't really bring me anything to the story I want to know what's happened I want the action I mean I guess that's action too but I want the like action action I want the the history the the fighting <laughs> the, well I don't want fighting necessarily but I I want everything okay I just don't feel like um, A Court of Silver Frames, A Court of Silver Flames, that book is basically 50% sex. Which honestly didn't give us anything other than sex. No, no it did not. Was it necessary? Oh no, it was not. What is this accent now? I don't know. I do wonder though, because I was told that the people who didn't like this book, it was because they hadn't read A Court of Silver Flames. So, 
I don't get that. I don't get that like at all because the only like Court of Silver Flames, well, Akatar bit we get is in the very last chapter. And that's when we're like, oh, familiar faces. But for someone who hasn't read Akatar, would be like, who the fuck are you? Yeah, I don't get it. Anyway, so <laughs> I need to move on in life. So thank you so much for watching. I shall see you all next time. Until then, take care. Oh, bye.